Hello there and welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. I've already discovered that I'm not adept at flex writing. About six months ago, I bought a Zebra G flex nib and heat set it into my Jinhao 159. It was a lot of fun to play with, but it was clear to me that it wasn't something I was good at or interested in enough to devote time to mastering. However, I've always been fascinated with the Pilot Falcon. The classic look and the added allure of the uniquely shaped Falcon's Beak or Falcon's Claw 14 karat gold nib. So when I saw this at an excellent price on Amazon, I pounced on it like a falcon on a mouse. The question now is, is this a flex pen or not? Well, let's find out the answer to that question right now. Well, we're going to do an unboxing here. And lo and behold, what do you know? It's a pilot. Yes, indeed, it's a pilot. It is a Pilot Falcon in black and gold and fine. And there was only two left. And so it was exactly the amount of my check I'm getting from YouTube this month. So thank you, YouTube people, for this new Pilot Falcon. I have been wanting and lusting after a Pilot Falcon for a long time, probably about a year or so now. And that's in sort of an upscale pilot box. Nice little coffin box. And we have the pen. And I believe it comes with a Con 40. Yep, it comes with the ubiquitous Con 40. Let's see what else is in the box. Pull the tab. And we have a cartridge in black and the use and care guide from Pilot. How to keep from stabbing yourself in the eye with your pen. How to keep it out of your mouth. Don't drink the ink. Maybe poisonous. Small parts. Choking hazard. All of those things. And we will run this pen through its paces. I've had the pen for a couple of weeks now and have been working at getting comfortable with it and how to write with it. I'll explain more about that later. First, let's look at this pen. What I want to do today is go over the parts and features of this fountain pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and do a writing sample. And please stay tuned after the writing sample where I'll talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this pen. An overall glance at this pen and the first word that comes to my mind is classy. The classic black with gold accents is very handsome. The pen is light in the hand and the injection molded plastic resin feels and looks very good. I don't see any injection molding gates or seams anywhere on this pen. Here we have a flat top finial with a gold colored metal dot in the center and a gold ring that holds that clip in place. Let's take a good look at this clip for a moment because I think this is a thing of beauty. It's multifaceted, not folded metal, and each edge of those facets has a swooping curve to it. This is a nice piece of engineering and design right here. And it is ergonomic and beautiful. I always like to point out when beautiful design and excellent functionality merge. It is springy and there is an upturned tip with a bulge underneath to reduce the contact point surface area and promote ease of use. It won't be snagging any material. The spring in this clip almost feels like it is spring loaded. By the way that top part pivots, you can see it pivoting right there like that. And the more I work this, the more I can feel that spring. The cap tapers up to a thin gold ring and then a wider gold cap band with an attractive square chain motif 
and Pilot Japan engraved into it. This is very elegant and attractive. There is a small step down to the barrel, which is straight until about here, where it tapers away towards another gold ring and a small black plastic flat finial at the end. It would have been very satisfying to have a matching shiny gold dot at the bottom here to match the cap finial, but sometimes I ask too much. Excuse me. I sometimes expect too much of you. This sticker, by the way, is removable, which I shall do the moment this video is done. The cap unscrews with almost two turns to reveal a tapered black plastic section that features two more attractive gold rings and the most interesting part of this whole pen, this 14 karat gold uniquely shaped falcon beak or claw nib. Everything about this nib is attractive. The humped downward clawed-like curve and the upswept finless feed are quite the eye catchers. Let's close up here on this nib. On the nib we see 14K. Let's see if I can get it better. There, we see 14K and 585. The 585 denotes the gold content. Then we see pilot in an arched curve or block letters. And then two more hallmarks. One right here that has the letters PP and F and some kind of a symbol between them in an oval. I haven't got a clue what that means. And 220. The 220 is the month and year of manufacture. So this was manufactured in February of 2020. And of course in uh, angle brackets SF for soft fine. The barrel unscrews and we see a Pilot Con 40 converter. The plastic resin version of the Falcon will not accept the much higher quality and better built Con 70 converter. I have one of those in my Explorer. There it is there. But the metal version of the Falcon, the metal Falcon, will accept this larger and much better engineered Con 70 converter. Just a dad joke here. If you bought a Pilot Falcon in the year 2000, when they were called the Namiki Falcon actually, you would be fortunate to own a genuine Millennium Falcon. I'll pause for laughter. And if you were writing alone with it, you would be, wait for it, wait for it, hand solo writing. Okay, okay, I'll stop. May the fourth be with you. May the Schwartz be with you. Adorable. Let's look inside the cap for a moment. You can see there's a really nice cap liner in there. Keeps that beautiful nib nice and wet and the cap posts deeply and securely and balances the pen beautifully for me it's also plenty long enough to write uh, with uh, unposted as well unless you have very large hands let's look at the lines of this pen now that it is posted this is understated elegance good design is all about balance proportion line, contrast, etc. All of these elements are on display here. The black contrasting with these gold bands, all of which are different thicknesses by the way, gives an overall balance to this pen while it's posted. The gold clip and 
gold dot finial balance nicely the falcon's beak and unposted we see beautifully symmetrical tapering lines from tip to finial again uh, a perfect touch would have been for this barrel finial to have a counterbalancing gold accent i know these nibs are uh, replaceable but i'm unwilling to pull the nib out to find out ink acquiring mine should also be a bit circumspect where larger dollars are concerned i want to know where my money is and i want to know right now okay You've got 17.5 percent in T-bills amortized over the fiscal year. Eight percent in stocks and bonds. Carry the nine to buy by the gross national product. Fortunately, funeral bouquets are deductible. Now it's time for some size comparisons. Okay, here we are with the Pilot Falcon, and this is a Pilot Metropolitan, a Pilot Explorer, a Pilot E95S and a Schaefer Targa. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. You can see that the Falcon isn't that much longer than the E95S. And now we'll look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. <laughs> we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper and this is the Pilot Falcon and it has a soft fine 14k gold nib and the ink is Robert Oster soda pop blue here's the swatch for the soda pop blue and alongside J. Urbain 1798 Cayenne du Nepal. I just bought a full bottle of this. Beautiful ink. And Diamine Asa Blue. Let's check the wetness. The pen is plenty wet, which is good. And line variation is always a popular topic with this pen, especially with this soft, fine nib. The nib does flex, there's no pressure, there's increasing pressure, but the more you push it, it tends to railroad, and watch, it won't railroad on me now that I'm on camera, but I am I'm, do get some railroading the further I push the pen. I should say, uh, this is not a flex nib. And I would caution about pushing it too hard and running the risk of springing it. As I understand it, it is possible to get what is called a Spencerian modification to a Falcon that will actually make it a flexible nib. I found that this feed cannot keep up to the wet flow if you push it too quickly. Uh, the Con 40 converter might be part of that problem and I'm going to jettison that and syringe fill a pilot cartridge like I do with my Pilot E95S. And our writing sample and some reverse writing It's very fine when you reverse write, but very dry. And some quick writing. Uh, 
when I'm writing without putting much pressure on the nib, it actually keeps up fairly nicely. But if I go slower and press on that nib, I will run into some railroading, which I don't seem to be able to demonstrate. Oh, there it goes. Railroaded a bit, as you can see. So, what do I like and what do I not like so much about this fountain pen? When I started writing with this pen, I found the nib to be uncomfortable as it kept digging into the paper. I was consciously trying to flex that nib. And as I said, I'm not very good at that. Uh, so it kept interrupting the flow of my writing because it kept digging into the paper. So I was consciously pushing the pen on my downstrokes. But the moment I relaxed and started to allow my writing to flow with this nib without worrying about putting pressure on it, I grew to love it very quickly. Large flourishes are possible with this pen, as long as you can control them. You see what happens when you lose control of it, but that's very nice. The pen is beautifully made and engineered and beautiful to look at. It is extremely well designed. The clip alone is a sublime blend of form and function. The gold accents are flawless. The pen is beautifully balanced in the hand, posted and unposted. And this nib is a joy to write with and to look at. It will certainly be a conversation starter in a meeting. What the hell kind of pen is that? Oh, this is my Millennium Falcon. And what do I not like so much about this pen? Well, very little really. That it doesn't accept a Con70 converter is the biggest issue I have with this pen. I wouldn't mind paying more money to get a Falcon that accepts a Con70, but I'm not sure I want to give up this lovely light resin for a metal pen to get it. I am nitpicking when I complain about the lack of a gold dot on the bottom finial, but it is something that my designer's eye notices. I'm not a fan at all of very fine nibs, and this one is very fine indeed, and yet I'm making an exception for this pen because I simply enjoy writing with it. It does take a couple of lines to get used to, especially when I've just been writing with my Loim's uh, Broad Architect Italic nib. But I know I'll keep coming back to this Falcon and it will stay in my collection. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications when a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.